So the reason I'm making this video is I want people to open their eyes and kind of learn the truth about the game store. I know a lot of people said, oh, my game store opened, a bunch of game stores open and they're offering magic play. Those game stores opened probably with PPP loans. They probably had lots of money coming from the government. A game store that opened that is two years, three years or less during the pandemic period. I mean, imagine opening during pandemic. Why would you do that? Oh, the government's just going to give you millions of dollars to buy your Lambo. Look, they're going to shut down. So first of all, that argument, oh, look at all these new game stores that open and they're doing magic. They're running out of money. They're like Mark's cards. They're like Luckins. In the UK, there's a lot of examples of basically card shops that opened during the pandemic. They paid out Mark's cards, for instance, a very famous example in sports cards. He got 90K a year. His brother got 90K a year. His wife got a job. His wife, brother's wife got a job. A best friend got 90K a year. You understand why they opened the sports card. You no, know, and in this case, they filed for bankruptcy. They took the money. It was a scam. They took the money from PSA for your to grade the card, and they didn't give it to PSA. And then PSA had to eat the cost. The same with Ludkins. This example is it's prevalent. It's everywhere. Every group submitter did something like this, where they got the money. They didn't put the money in escrow. They used the money to pay out their salaries, which just so happened to be. Me, my brother, my br wife, my wife's friend, my uh, brother's wife, <laughs> you know. So those game stores will either file for bankruptcy soon, they're not going to last. They were opened by people with very little skill sets, without any experience in having a business. They saw an opportunity to get their Lambos and their PPP loans and their government bailouts, and they took it. Those game stores are not relevant for the discussion I'm going to have is why game stores should drop magic. Now, WPN, right? They care about what your game store looks. A few years ago, they wanted every game store to invest and build out. I don't know if you guys remember this. I do since I had a game store then. They wanted you to be Mox Boarding House. So they had videos online, which are still online, which they show you what they would love your environment to be. And this would be multi-million dollar build outs. Ideally, hey, you know, they show you all these amazing stores. And that you, you, hey, if you took a $2 million loan, you too could be like a store like this. Why? And then they care about your play area, right? So you can't just be a small store of no play area. They care about your play area. They even care about your bathroom. How often you clean the bathroom. So a lot of you have never applied to be WPN stores. I have. They need pictures of your bathroom. I'm not kidding. And it's just like, okay. And then you have to tell, oh, is the bathroom for public use? Is it for everybody? Is it gender appropriate? I mean, it's, it's you know, <laughs> the fact that they have that much control while they give you crappy 10 cent promos, I've never seen that before. Pokemon does not ask you to take a picture of your store to send it to your distributor to get approved. Pokemon doesn't ask anything. They're just like, okay, cool. Where do we send it to? And that's how business should be done. Business should be done as a business, not as a social justice project. And I'm gonna to get to that a little later. The most successful businesses I've seen are card breakers, like Backyard Breaks. A lot of you guys don't like when I talk about them. Their model is correct. Their model is, hey, we have some streamers. They come into an office. It's an office building and we stream all night, we stream all day, and there is not a single customer unless the customer gets a big hit and we have a appointment system. That's the right system. And you know what? who else has used that system? Alpha Investments. He has a game store. To my knowledge, he has never had a customer come in that wasn't either a friend or had an appointment. The game store does not offer gameplay, which has been a big criticism I've had because if you want to build, I mean, think about Alpha Investments. If you had a game store that you could go to, wouldn't that be like one of the most popping places for the community? 
the reason Alpha Investment does not do that, even though it would, I, I agree, it would be beneficial for his community if his game store was open to the public. It is not. It is not open to the public. He's never had one tournament. He's never had one event. Uh, he's not even had a meet and greet, which would make a lot of sense. And he's smart about this. He's smart. A lot of you guys think that I'm exaggerating about the toilet situation. So let me address that right now. When I had my game store for one year, our toilet clogged four, five, four or five times. And when it clogs, it floods and you know, it's just the grossest thing. And you have to hire a plumber, emergency plumber to fix it, you know, shut down your store. I don't know what it is. Is it the food that they're eating? Is it the food that they're eating while they're playing? It's, it tends to be greasy food. There is a correlation between a gamer and I, this is just not, this is just fact. This is fact. You can ask game store owners, hey, no, compare, because there's more people using the toilet, okay? So if a toilet clogs at home and it's just you, so it's just me who uses the toilet, right? It's very unlikely, because how many times am I gonna use a toilet a day over a year? If you have a, you know, eight or 10 people using the toilet every, you know, single, not like every hour or every day, but when they come, they're using the toilet, it will clog. It's just a mathematical formula, right? If every, 100 times or 1,000 times you use a toilet, it clogs for whatever reason. Well, the more people using the toilet, if you still, instead of eight, you have 20 or 30 people using the toilet, it will clog faster than if you had one person. This is just common sense, guys. Okay, it's just common sense, math. The more people using the toilet, the more likely it will clog. There's a probability, yes? Now let me get to the smelly players and people feel very offended. The people who are offended, they're the most smelly of them all. The reason the smelly players cannot like figure out that they themselves are smelly is because they smell. Do you understand, like if you live near a, a trash heap, right? You probably are used to that smell. Now, if I came to a trash heap, I would puke, right? I'd be like, oh my God, those are gross. But you, you live in a trash heap. You live in a home that has Mountain Dew bottles everywhere and spill. Like the bottom denominator, right? The idea of the bottom denominator is pretty effective in card shops. And again, I'm not saying this to offend anyone because I don't care. I was going to do live streaming. My concept was never to do gameplay anymore because I did it for a year and I realized, oh my gosh, this thing is not making me money and my toilet is always clogged and, and it sucks, you know? I mean, we only had one toilet, so the employees had to use the same toilet as the customers. That sucks. Uh, the place that we rented out only had one toilet. It should have been employee only toilet, but hey, WPN. Um, if you go to a game store and you think everyone smells really nice, I think you yourself are probably smelly. This is not me making fun of you. This is the truth. I want you to walk into Nordstrom's. I want you to walk into Dillard's, if that didn't bankrupt already, you know, or Brooks Brothers, or uh, walk into a nice, a nice store. It doesn't have to be a fancy store. Or walk into a Rolex. And then that person is going to smell you and be like, wow, what the heck? Just because the standard is so low, the bottom denominator at a game store does not mean that you don't smell. One good incidence of this is the butt crack incident where a person went to a Magic Fest or a Grand Prix, whatever it was called at the time. He snapped pictures. You know, I mean, it's a random dude. And how many butt cracks was there at this convention? How many people were at the convention? Maybe 200, 300? How many butt crack pictures did we get that went viral? Like if somebody is not with a butt crack issue and they understand they have this issue, this isn't the first time, you know, they didn't gain a bunch of weight magically and then went to the magic tournament, right? Oh, I'm cosplaying as a magic player. No, no, they understand they need a belt. They didn't wear the belt. Something as simple as putting on a belt before going out and play all day in close proximity was not done. 
So you're telling me something more complicated and takes more time, like taking a shower before going to your event. If a person does not even, and this is an all day event, by the way, this isn't like an FN where you come from work. I get that. Hey, you come from work. Work is a little dirty. Maybe you're like a coal miner or something. Hey, I welcome the coal miners. I welcome you because you work hard and you deserve, you know, a place to relax and hang out. Hey, I'm good with that. But what I'm saying is if you have all day, all weekend to prepare to go to an event and you're so lazy or so unhygienic that most magic players don't even put on a belt knowing that their butt is going to crack. What hope does me, me as a store owner have? Again, you are so lazy or so unhygienic, you won't even put on a belt. A simple, how long does it take to put on a belt, guys? A second, two seconds, maybe if you had problems, five seconds. It's a belt. It is a belt. And we would expect these people to take showers every day. We would expect these people to wear deodorant. The answer is no, right? Because that takes more time to do. And, you know, honestly, uh, you know, it just takes more time. So if somebody is not willing to do the easy, less time taking tasks, they are have no chance of doing the more complicated or, you know, in this case, showering, you know, is complicated. So, I mean, so I'm reading the comments and I'm going to address them. I'm very mad at some of the comments right now because they are unrealistic. The people who say that they buy Snickers and that I, I, oh. If the problem with social media is people say this, oh, I'm going to support my local game store. The people who say that, then immediately go on Amazon when there's a sale and then buy a box. Oh, I'm gonna buy my box from my local game store. Oh, this $5 cheaper than Amazon. Oh, nope. Like, I know why you are saying on social media because you wanna seem cool and hip and social justice-y, right? But that's just not the reality. The reality is look at, I mean, I maybe we can get Amazon's numbers on Magic. It wouldn't be surprised me if Amazon made up 70% of online sales of Magic the Gathering or more. The boxes are cheap. It is casual. So they have a way bigger audience, right? So when you're like, oh, TCG player, they probably sell. No, they don't because their audience is people who play Magic or, or trading card games. Amazon's audience is like every American, everybody. So, I mean, you, you can't, that's why, that's why Walmart sells so much. You might be like, oh, Walmart. It's because there's so many people who go to Walmart, like compared to your, your local card game store. What, like, I, I mean, in a Walmart, in a given day, what do you think, 5,000 people, 10,000 people at your Walmart? At a given day, maybe five people, 10 people at your local game store if it's lucky. The magnitude of potential customers on a Target, a Walmart, or God forbid, an Amazon, is such a scale that it would blow out anything that you could even imagine. I sold Legos on Amazon and it never occurred to me that like, wait a second, even though I had to pay 20% fees, oh, the fees are something else. I'm not saying the fees. We could move more Legos in one day on Amazon, which we have, than a whole year at my physical game store. That's insanity. That's insanity. I mean, holy blank, that doesn't, I, it didn't even make sense. As soon as you list it, it's all gone because you listed a good price and it already got shipped it to Amazon. I mean, it's just too easy, guys. So like the idea that these people who are extremely lazy, okay, if you're so lazy, you won't even put on a belt. What type of person is that? Is that the type of person who will buy boxes from Amazon? Or is that the type of person who will drive to his local game store, buy boxes, open, be a good part of the community? If you're so lazy, you can't even put a belt on, even though you have known butt crack issues. 
and then you get the, get the guy banned. I mean, I wish they continued to do butt cracks, uh, but that guy got banned for a while. I think he's unbanned now. But like, I wish there was a dude, and all he would do is go to Magic tournaments, big and small, and just take pictures of butt cracks every day. Because then that would prove my point. But of course, you would get banned. People would be upset. Uh, especially the people with the butt cracks, they're not going to be too happy when they see you the next time around, right? But I mean, it, it is that simple. I mean, if you cannot put on a belt, why would I expect you to be able to shower when showering is a more complicated, more time consuming by like magnetons, right? So maybe it's a 15 minute shower versus a 15 second belt. If you can't do something as putting on a belt, to prevent butt cracks and the embarrassment of our game, why would I expect you to be able to take a shower? I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being sadistic. I'm not being any of these istic things. I'm just being truthful. Why would I expect you to take a shower? Why would I expect you not to be smelly? You couldn't even put on a mother effing belt, my friend. Bye, guys.